So what we wanted to do today was to build an API endpoint, which would do something to sim something similar to what uh, David and Mutasham did, but the use case is completely different. Uh, the endpoint that we created is basically using Puppeteer under the hood, taking screenshots of the website or taking HTML content, uh, creating a DOM element out of it, capturing that or taking a screenshot of that and then returning it to the user. Now the use cases for this are pretty massive. Uh, one of the one of my favorite use cases is going to be in the SEO sector because in SEOs we have open graph images which are always dynamic and I wanted to create that keeping that in mind and for I saw that Jason was doing something with YouTube so if you know Jason wants to create a YouTube thumbnails dynamically this is something that he can use as well. So let me see okay this is the register endpoint. Now, there are various texts for this. Obviously, we don't want someone to create, keep on using the same email address to uh, register for their account. So we have uh, taken care of that as well. What I'm going to do is remove this and should start this. Oops. Send the request in here. So this is going to go to uh, the workflow here. Check, check in that table if it exists or not. If it does not, create an API key, has that API key, store all that information in that table, share that, uh, uh, send an email to the user like, hey, here is, uh, thank you for registering, here is your API key, and then also uh, give a response back to the user. So we have like, the user knows what the next step is so that they can go ahead, yeah, work with that API key and use it in the next process. Now for the next process, we have an image and over here, obviously, we have taken care of again uh, the authentication, making sure that the user is providing the correct uh, API key. And uh, the user can provide, select the mode. It can be either a URL or HTML. If it's HTML, the content changes to the HTML uh, content that they provide, and they can also pass in the resolution. Let's check with uh, the URL mode. Again, it's going to make a request in here. We created a new node called PageRes, which is actually a NPM package that we are using to create this. And then we get the image uh, of that, or the screenshot of that website. If we do HTML, and let's just wrap this up in an H1 tag. Execute the workflow once again. Now this will just give us the uh, HTML. Hmm. Okay, my bad. It should have the uh, respond to webhook node at the end, but it wasn't connect, uh, connected. That's why we don't see that. But eventually that would be the result. We can check this in here. So this is the result that we have. So this is basically again an image. Now, just to give you a quick demo about how SEO thing works, I created another endpoint which has a slash demo and which takes uh, the query parameter URL. With this, whenever someone passes on that URL, uh, the query parameter, they get the image. So over here, let's update the URL. and start the workflow. So right now we are passing on the URL anatend.io. It will make a request to that. So here we see that it takes that screenshot and renders it out. Now I have tried it on metatags.io. It should work. If it does not, there might be some, uh, I'm not sure why it won't work. Like it works, it takes some time because it, uh, needs some time to uh, create the image. That is something that we need to see like how we can optimize this and how we can implement caching to this. But then in the uh, metadex.io, you would see the meta information as well as the preview image. So that's, the, that's what we created uh, today. 